Okay, well, we have about 10 o'clock. I'd like to thank you all for spending some time with us here at the Center for Victory this morning. Uh, for those of you that this before, uh, we, we do these uh, webinars approximately once or twice a month. And glad you're taking time out to chat with us today, uh, or to spend time with us today. November is our attitude, and uh, the title of our webinar today is Shining Through Your Talents. Um, we're, uh, we're very thankful and appreciative for the team that we have here, and we thought we'd share some tips and tricks with you in, in your talent management process. Uh, we have some people that are on the phone, so the, I have the slide that I have up in front uh, to start things off. Uh, it says, when you do the common things in life in an uncommon, the attention of the world. I had the opportunity to um, to uh, locker room, and this is one of the uh, signs on the wall. And a better slide to kick off today's uh, today's webinar because what we're going to talk about are some common things, but we might give you some different tips and tricks. Okay. So before I go in too much further, let me tell you a little. Bit but about who I am, I'm one of the senior partners at the Center for Victory. Most of the time, you see Eric Guy on here and Zach Del Turco uh, spreading the love, and uh, all of us are uh, taking some opportunities to, to come online. And, and question that I have for you to get things first question I have for you is when you think of talent, Think about people you work with, or you think about yourself. Uh, where, where, and what are some areas that um, you feel uh, passion of talent? Okay, because as we go through this, we're going to talk about a couple of concepts. We're going to talk about self awareness, about how you as a leader can leverage your talents to be more impactful perhaps and so to maybe elevate those around you okay one of the first first thing you can look at what i call our our aperture our sight picture for those of you that are students of leadership may book uh, seven habits of highly effective people Stephen Covey, the author, often talks about the, how we see the world. That's the definition of the word paradigm, how we see the world. Sometimes a leadership capacity can, be, can help us uh, from a positive aspect. And sometimes uh, if we're not careful, uh, it may also our our capabilities for, for effectiveness. So oftentimes people will, come to us and um, maybe some challenges that they're having in the workplace or the challenges they might be having with a, a, a particular circumstance or employee. And one of the first things we try to evaluate is, is do we have a challenge or do we have a communication problem? And we usually start off with trying to understand uh, where the paradigm is and how people uh, are doing things. So second question I'll have for you in, in today's webinar is, how do you see the world? Or how are you viewing those around you? How are you viewing yourself? The number one most in item for leaders, regardless of industry, is understanding your self-awareness. Okay. That helps us from an individual leadership perspective, but it also helps us to grow and, and elevate. So, what's your paradigm? How you see the world? Really, is this concept that we call talent optimization? Uh, there's a slide in front of you that uh, is the whole talent optimization. 
but really what we're talking about today is people strategy okay the the process allows us to connect our people strategy to our business strategy my guess is many of you probably have long range plans regardless of business okay? you have strategic plans you have um operational plans thing to help companies and organizations with is to actually cultivate and further develop their people strategy and having having helped them understand that people strategy is uh three-dimensional i told you the days of directives directive uh, forms of uh, of management management are um, going away and so the talent optimization process is really helping you leverage your talent more effectively if i were to ask you when you think about when um think about the word talent really a good definition of that word is our and their skills Okay, as you see here on the slide. Uh, if we're doing what comes natural to us, there's a great lat um, we're gonna perform in an optimal manner. Similarly, if we're leading teams, if you have members of our team, what comes natural to them, we're likely to get the best result. Uh, at the Center for Victory, very frequently in, 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 in teach, there's a premise that people have behavioral drive. Those drives create motivating needs. Uh, and if we are able to understand and, and, and needs, hopefully we're gonna get the resultant behaviors that we seek from our, from our teams. So drives create motivating needs if we understand and can uh, help those around us uh, achieve their motivating needs, then we're going to get the result for. So our natural aptitudes or skills is actually a, a, a short definition of the word talent. At the Center for Victory, we use, as some of you know, we use um, various assessments that we we tend to use most is this what we call the predictive index and the predictive index is, is like many of you might have uh, taken uh, in your professional careers uh, there's only about 800 of them in the world uh, the one uh, the most or the predictive index uh, the disc uh, myers-briggs colby a strengths finders uh, and, and most of them measure uh, the same types of behavioral drives, uh, but, but I thought I would just give you a quick rundown of what the, the predictive index measures. And it's really for, for behavioral drive, dominance, extroversion, patience, and formality. So dominance is really the need for someone to exert influence over a, a um, people are uh, events. You know, sometimes people with, and like their ideas best. Okay, and there's others who like the overall best idea for the team. Okay, extroversion is we call the drive for social interaction, but it's really we have some people who are like to talk things out, and we have others that like to think things out. Okay, that's what we call extroversion. Patience is the third drive we have some great deals of patience and then we have uh others who maybe don't don't have uh, but in the workplace what that translates to is do we have people that have the ability to ask or do we have people that really uh, prefer to do the same thing over and over again we have the uh, what's called formality and really that's seen as a common and rule following and 
So we have some people that really, that's a drive for that. Um, and we have others uh, in our in our workforce that roles uh, can be just a guy. You think about our current talent landscape and we think about our current self-awareness, you know, as, as leaders, uh, all the overview of what uh, the predict predictive index measures and, and is about, uh, question I would have for your self-awareness as a leader. If you are uh, pretty self-aware, what can you do the, um, the title of today's presentation, what can you do to shine through your town to better understand those around you, okay? Do you have that understanding? Do you really know what's going on with your team? around you and how can you help elevate them uh, to, to the next level and PI of course we have the ability to uh, help ourselves with self-awareness and what you're looking at on the screen there is just a part of what you see in our and those tabs that go across the, the screen there are all different reports and that we have available uh, to help uh, people like you and the people we serve uh, to better understand them. Okay. So we talked about talent. We've talked about self will share with you. And, and really, um, it's a word that I think uh, sometimes you don't hear in, in human performance or uh, performance management, okay? And that's the word capacity. A great, uh, or excuse me, a definition of the word capacity is what you see here on your screen. Our ability to perform or withstand. So define the word capacity uh, as the ability to do work. So when you think about your current team, of your current teams, okay, um, how can you increase the capacity? Well, typically there's two ways move people onto our teams who have greater capacity through the hiring process or we can help our current capacity through training and coaching so how much coaching are you doing uh, with your teams okay do you have a collaborative form of leadership or uh, do you have is there is there an opportunity there for you to have a better understanding that uh, are on your team? And what would it be like? You know, if we often hear about the word engagement, okay, we often, especially those that are uh, students of. Uh, you know, wanting to improve the, the their workforce. Um, the word engagement side, it really has nothing to do with happiness. Uh, as many of you already know, happiness is an internal choice. We, um, it's really about um, do are we do we have a, a group of like in the same direction, and are they passionate and committed to the work that we're doing, that passion and commitment uh, are the two hallmarks uh, of an engaged employee. If they're not engaged, maybe it has to do with losses of disengagement, which is what you're seeing on the screen here. We have, uh, all right, and what we understand from behavioral science and psychometrics is is that when we put people People in doing what comes natural to them, they tend to be more uh, in line with the one. They, they tend, their engagement rates tend to be higher because they're leveraging what comes natural to them. But when you have roles, sometimes they tend to be on that want to line, right? The discretionary effort is are they to go the extra mile are they willing to pull uh without being asked 
this can. So the four forces of disengagement, the first one's job fit. Okay? Are they a fit uh, for the uh, in? Okay? Obviously, we have tools that help us understand that. But if you have somebody that's not a fit for the role, chances are their performance might not be what you want it to be. Okay. Finally, the, the second force of disengagement, uh, relationship between the manager and the employee. Okay. If you've re read any self-development, uh, catch any of our webinars, you, you've, you know that the manager uh, tends to the reasons why people are leaving companies. They're not quitting companies, they're quitting their managers. Okay. So management is can be the second engagement. Uh, culture uh, is third on our list. Do they fit in the culture? Okay, as if they're a part of the culture. Uh, sometimes uh, if they don't, that can be a detractor. And lastly, along with culture, do they feel okay? So this is a disengagement. They tend to pull your good people down. Okay, if we have that aren't a fit for one of those four reasons, uh, we have to understand and investigate what and what we can do to uh, accomplish some root cause analysis and make sure that uh, people uh, don't, uh, their, their attitudes and behavior don't uh, poison the rest of our culture. So po poised to you, what, when you think about your teams, hey, click. If, I, if you were to write down a piece of paper right now, a list of names of people that you work with that advise, which ones are the one, which, which uh, of the direct reports are engaged, which ones appear to be disengaged? What can you do to find out, okay? What can, how can you use your talents to increase and, and improve or, or to those around you? A little, some statistics for you on the screen. I know, again, I know we have some people on the phone, but 30, you know, when people are engaged, turnover rates tend to go down. Okay, we have fewer safety ins, higher productivity, okay, um, fewer quality incidents. Fewer defects. Engagement is a great word. There's many articles about it, and, but what tactically can we do? Become more accountable as leaders, and what tactically can we do to increase the engagement uh, of and uh, our peers? So I thought I would uh, give you. You, uh, uh, I thought I would give you a, uh, uh, an example, okay, an actual opportunity for you to do some of your, uh, your processes by way of those that you use in a, in a supervisory capacity. Okay? Any of you uh, in, in, in have gone through onboarding processes or maybe you have onboarding processes that cover a myriad of, of, of technical and, and legal requirements. Uh, for, um, we had our breakfast briefing earlier this week and we had a good audience and I, I posed the question to them. I said, you know, how many, in your onboarding processes, how many of the supervisors, okay, to these new employees participate in the onboarding? at any given point. Like, so the, the employees going through an onboarding process, when do they meet their supervisor? And if they're in the headlight look, because well, that, that doesn't happen usually. Um, so my, I, whether you have an onboarding process or not, I wanna talk about the, what I call the initial feedback session. Okay, and this is the first convert that a supervisor has with an employee after they've gone through their onboarding process, maybe it's a week or two, uh, two weeks in, and they're beginning their supervisor to 
direct group initial feedback. And what this conversation is designed to do is really, it's a, it begins the trust between the supervisor and the direct report. It's the supervisor should lead the discussion. It should be a discussion along the lines of, hey, welcome to our company. And what I thought I'd look, what I thought I would do today is, is just have a conversation with you to understand some things that, uh, you know, you need to be successful uh, at, in the work environment. What are some things that last with you with good supervisors? And what are some things that maybe didn't, weren't, weren't as successful? Okay. okay. Some other questions. You know, when's your birthday? When's your anniversary? Um, when, uh, what are some things that you do and you're off to notice I'm not talking any about the job at this point. We have to build relationships with those that we're leading. All right. Understand what they are, what they need to be successful. Because if we don't know that, chances are we're just guessing. Okay. The question I would have, if you're in a supervisory capacity right now and you're on this call and you're, or, and you're on this webinar, you have with your employees, right? I'm not talking about an unprofessional relationship, but do you know these things? these things you can you have this type of initial feedback discussion okay after you've asked the questions okay and you the uh, employee then it's your turn as a supervisor to say hey listen you know thanks very much for sharing these, you know this information with me I'd like to share a little bit about myself and you could talk about some of the things that uh, you do and maybe some of your hobbies, but more importantly, you can talk about some things that are important to you, you know, such as timeliness, such as communicate things that the employee can do to be successful um, in, in their role. And so at the conclusion of this discussion, you know, 15, 20 minutes, half hour, maybe you decide to do it over a lunch. Um, at the conclusion of this station and a baseline for a relationship, okay. Uh, a professional relationship in the workplace. Okay, so are you doing these? If you're not, if you did do something like this uh, in the future, what kind of impact? Do you, okay, uh, I can I can assure you that if you will, if you're not currently doing something like this, if you will try it, uh, get uh, results like you've never never seen. Uh, I loaded in some documents into the slideshow here that we have perspective. This is a placard. Uh, sometimes with our clients, well, our clients will, will use these documents, feedback discussion where, you know, the supervisor has their placard out. This is what you see in front of you. And now, and these become conversation pieces. Okay. This is how I am as a supervisor. This is how you are as a, direct report how are we different this is objective science okay this isn't subjective hyperbole okay uh, another is how well they match to the job that they're in okay in a perfect world we they're the match okay we can show them okay this is why you know you were hired um, so discussion uh, could also go about personal development charts that we also, that we have available in the PI software. This is how you can be successful in a role, and here are some some documents to take with you to get you off on the right foot. Lastly, we have what's called a management strategy guide, and this is important for the supervisors. Supervisors can begin to see very early on in their in their supervisory relationship what the direct, okay what they need to be successful in the role and if you would like more information about this we can and you can reach out to me and uh, we can we can talk about how we leverage these documents in our uh, supervisory roles i'll ask you now that we've got towards the end of the presentation if you have worked with people in the past or maybe currently and, and you wonder about 
whether or not they are, uh, maybe the, if they're struggling in the role, their performance, or is it possible that the way we're communicating as leaders, we need to kind of adjust that aperture, right? Maybe we need to talk to people the way they needed to be talked to, uh, or are we talking to them in a one size fits all approach? Remember, drives, needs, behaviors. If we're not getting the resultant behaviors or relationship, let's back up one step to the motivating needs, okay? And let's think about how we're for feedback, okay? So that's the question I'll pose to you. If you have a struggle with have a struggle with a peer, is it a performance issue or is it a, is it a communication issue? Well, we've talked a lot today and talent is really the talent optimization process like I mentioned when we first started uh, this this webinar and that's connecting me to our business strategy this is my contact information and there's many of us there for victory I can tell you in the month of November uh, I'm celebrating the fact that I work with some fantastic employees uh, team members at the Center for Victory, and I'm lucky to be on that team. So I think uh, what we'll do now, uh, 28 minutes or so into it, let's open it up for some questions. Gladly take some questions from me. Excuse me. Questions? Morgan, do you see any questions on there? Well, I don't see any questions. Uh, there'll be a recording of this and we'll it'll be up on our site. So if you want to refer back to it, um, Thank you for uh, coming and uh, spending time with us.